Hello everyone. Welcome to this presentation entitled, I got my ancestry DNA results back. Now what? This picture illustrates how I felt when I first received my DNA results. Maybe this was your experience also. To help me understand my results better, I have read articles on DNA, listened to online lectures, attended classes, moved my raw DNA to my heritage, Family Tree DNA and GEDmatch, experimented with chromosome mapping, hired a DNA genealogist, and generally explored various aspects of my DNA results. I have made some amazing genealogy breakthroughs with DNA. In two different instances, it has unraveled genealogy mysteries that I never thought would be solved. I firmly believe that they could not have been discovered by traditional genealogy research. I am sold on DNA. I still do not consider myself an expert on DNA and the scientific part still baffles me. So I will be approaching this presentation from a layman's perspective, someone who has had some success and who can hopefully present it in a way everyone can understand. Keep in mind, we are only talking about ancestry DNA tests here today. Because we only have 15 minutes for this presentation, we will only be looking at DNA matches and I will be keeping this pretty basic. Once you get your DNA results back, this is what you will see when you click on DNA in Ancestry.com. We're going to focus today on the middle section of this screen, the one entitled DNA Matches. Your DNA matches are probably going to be the part of your DNA results which will be the most useful as far as genealogy is concerned. Note that Ancestry has given me eight ancestor hints from my DNA matches. I have 26 starred matches. These are matches I have personally marked or starred as important. Ancestry also informs me that I have 73 matches that are related to me as fourth cousins or closer. To see your matches, you will need to click on View All DNA Matches. You will see a screen like this which lists all your matches. Note at the top right, it will show you how many pages of matches you have. In my case, there are 163 pages. There are 50 matches per page, which means I have approximately 8,150 matches. That's kind of overwhelming and unmanageable. Today, we'll look at some ways you can focus on certain matches. Matches can be viewed by relationship, which shows the closest matches first. Here you see my close relationship matches. To protect privacy, names have been changed to read as a relationship instead of a name. If a match has two initials, that normally means that the person who took the test is not managing their own test. This would occur when a genealogy enthusiast got a relative to take a test to help them create a triangulation or to give them additional DNA options. Normally, next to the initials you will see administered by so-and-so. Again, because of privacy, I have blocked that part out and just left the initials. Matches can also be sorted by date, which is the date the test results were posted, not the date the person last logged in. So if you want to see your newest matches, click on date and the most recent match will be shown first on your results list. Now for a little science. DNA is passed down from generation to generation, but with each generation, the amount of DNA passed down is halved. This chart shows approximately what percentage of DNA you share with your ancestors as you go back each generation. By the time you get back to your second great grandparents, you will only have about 12% of their DNA, 6% from each of them. Another thing to consider is that DNA is passed down randomly and sometimes mutates which is why you look different from your brothers and sisters. So even though you share the same DNA with a distant cousin, your sibling may not share any of that same DNA or such a small part that it will not show as a match. This also explains by one of your, why one of your siblings may have the Jones's nose, but you have the Smith's ears. This is why it's important to get tests from as many of your close relatives as possible, especially your parents or someone in the generation before you. DNA companies report the amount of DNA you share with a match in centimorgans. Centimorgans are the measurement of the shared DNA. This chart, courtesy of Ancestry.com, shows how much DNA in centimorgans you would expect to share with the relations listed. Obviously, the higher the count of centimorgans, the closer the relationship. 
So as you see, parent and child or identical twin would share 3,475 centimorgans, whereas a grandparent, aunt, uncle, half-sibling, etc., would only share 1,450 to 2,050 centimorgans. In case you've fallen asleep by now, that's about as scientific as I'm going to get. Going back to the Ancestry Matches page, let's see how this works with one of my fourth cousin matches. Clicking on the little circle with the question mark by a match will generate a chart, which shows how you are possibly related to your match. This chart shows one of several relationship scenarios with a fourth cousin match. Some other basic features it is important to know are shown here. On the left, there are several symbols that can be helpful. If you click on the gray star, it will turn orange, allowing you to mark that particular match as an important one. Note that on the, the match with the orange star, there's a little document symbol out to the right, which indicates that I have included some notes on this particular match. Notes can be attached to any match when you click on into that person, whether they are starred or not. In the notes, you can indicate on what line you are related and other pertinent information you discover. The little blue circle on the left of some of my matches indicates that these are matches that I have not yet looked at. Once I look at them, that blue circle will disappear. On the right of the screen, you can see if your match has attached a tree to their DNA results. Here is a match with a fourth cousin that has 5,313 people in their tree. This would be the one I would open up first so I can compare trees. One match has 875 people but the little lock symbol indicates that their tree is locked and you would need to contact them and ask them if they would be willing to open up their tree. Here also are several matches that show that no family tree has been attached. This I'm afraid is all too common. Many people do a DNA match to discover their ethnicity and that's where it stops. You can email those people through the Ancestry system to see if they would be willing to share information with you. But to be quite honest, I have had very few responses when I have done that. In some cases, matches listed with no family tree actually do have a family tree in Ancestry. It's just not connected to their DNA results. For example, when I click into my match with the initials B and M, he actually does have two trees. They're just not connected to his DNA results. You can email the person and ask them to attach the tree or of course you can just look at their tree. On the right you can see their ethnicity. That's always good to compare with yours and might give you some clues to your connection. Over by their name you can see how long they've been a member of Ancestry. Often this is when they did their DNA and when they last logged in. This gives you some indication on how active they are. Here on this page are many of the features we've looked at. This is where you can add your note. Over here is where you can star a match, mark a view, match as viewed or unviewed, and delete a match. As we go back to the DNA results page, there are filters that correspond to some of those features. If you click the new filter, it will bring up the unviewed matches that have the little blue circle. If you hit the star filter, it will bring up all the people you have starred. You can use star in different ways. One way is to star every match you know belonging to a certain line. Or in reverse, star all your fourth cousin matches and eliminate the stars of a line you know, leaving stars only on those ancestors you want to explore more. Okay, now we've covered the basics, we come to the fun part. There are many different strategies to unraveling your DNA. Unfortunately, we only have time to discuss a few significant ways today. My main purpose for doing a DNA test was to find the parents of my second great-grandfather, John Sinclair. From traditional genealogy research, I knew he was born in 1803, give or take a year, and that he was born in Paisley, Scotland. I was pretty sure through a process of elimination that his parents were Duncan Sinclair and Janet McCullum, but I had no proof. After 30 years of researching, two trips to Paisley working with a genealogist there, I could not verify who his parents were. 
Knowing that this dead end was back more than 200 years ago and that it involved third great grandparents, now think about the percentage of DNA I would share with a fifth cousin, I was very skeptical as to whether I would find anything. However, a very simple but effective strategy is one that solved the biggest brick wall problem I have had. I was scrolling through my distant cousin matches and happened to see a match that was administered by someone with the last name of McCullum. Notice that this match only has a confidence level of moderate. My interest was piqued, and then I noticed there was a family tree attached. In opening up the tree, I looked at DM's surname list, clicked on McCullum and zeroed in on John McCullum, who would have been born in the right time period as the Janet McCullum I suspected was John's mother. After doing more research, here is what I found on Scotland's people. John McCullum, my DNA matches ancestor, and Janet McCullum, my suspected third great-grandmother, were brother and sister, born to Duncan McCullum and Agnes Pinkerton. So here was the proof I needed that Duncan Sinclair and Janet McCullum were the parents of my second great-grandfather, John Sinclair. DM and I shared 11.8 centimorgans as shown here by clicking on the circle with the little eye in it. We don't share much DNA. When you click on what does this mean, it shows a possible relationship chart which I plotted out with DM and myself. Interestingly, I was the only one of my close relatives on that paternal side that matched with DM. I was absolutely thrilled to have been able to solve this dead end with a DNA match, especially one more than 200 years ago. Another simple strategy is to click on Search Matches in the top right hand corner. You will see a screen that has a surname and birth location search. You can enter a surname or a birth location or both if you want to narrow your search. You will be shown matches that have the same surname or birth location. I found my other amazing find through this simple search. I put Sinclair as my surname and India as my birth location because I wanted to find any possible matches corresponding to those parameters. Here are some of the results of my search. Other than my close matches shown here as the top four matches that I already knew about, I found a fourth cousin match with a Sinclair in India that surprised and intrigued me. I thought I knew about all the Sinclair family members that lived in India. Shown here, this match person is also the administrator for a second person who also came up as a match. As I explored my fourth cousin's site, I found a brother to my great grandfather that neither I nor any of my family even knew existed. He has many descendants. This was an amazing find. Now all I have to do is to persuade my fourth cousin how we are connected and connect with all my new cousins. There are a couple of things you need to know about the surname search. Firstly, this surname and birth location search searches the trees that are connected to your DNA matches. It is important to realize that many of your important matches may not have a tree attached and therefore will not show up in your results. Also, even if you find some corresponding surnames, it does not necessarily mean that that is the line where your DNA matches. If you are searching for a common name like Brown, the Browns who come up in a surname match may come up just because it is a common name, not because that is the part of their family with whom you have a DNA match. Secondly, a surname search will also bring up a lock tree that contains that surname. You still won't be able to see their tree, but it may give you a good reason to contact that person and request that they open their tree for you. The last strategy we're going to talk about is shared matches. This is the nuts and bolts of DNA testing. The shared matches option appears when you click into one of your matches. In this slide, you see my match with AV, the person through whom I found a brother to my great grandfather. I know he is connected to me through my father's paternal line. If I click shared matches, I will see the matches that AV and I share. As expected, he was a match with most of my close matches on my father's side. He also matches with several fourth cousins 
who I am totally unfamiliar with. I don't know exactly how we are related, but I do know they are all connected to my father's paternal line, because I know my connection to AV is through that line. When Ancestry produces your shared matches, they do not go any further than fourth cousin matches. However, if you do a search in reverse from a fifth to eighth cousin match, as shown here with the DM match that helped me find my third great grandparents, it will bring up shared matches up to a distance of fourth cousins. Now I see these shared matches, I can start to find where we connect. In this case, I would start with LC, who has a tree of 1,581 people connected to her DNA. There are a lot of fourth cousins here with no tree. Firstly, I would check to see if they have an ancestry tree that is just not linked to their DNA. I would also check to see if they have a tree somewhere else, such as my heritage or other tree sites. If they have a tree with only a few people on, I would start researching their tree until I maybe run into someone else who also has the same people in their tree. I would start sending out email messages with a hope that they will respond. As genealogists, we have many ways of finding out information. With shared matches, the strategies you can use are almost endless. Experiment and have fun finding out more information on your family and your ancestors through DNA. So, if you haven't done so already, buy a DNA kit, spit in the tube and start reaping the genealogy benefits of your DNA matches. <laughs>